Hello all and welcome to episode 40 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged and uh, we welcome Kumaran back for the second time uh, after his uh, illness which he has recovered very well and uh, he is in good uh, health and good humor and also Venkat who has a fancy new background today and uh, uh, it seems like a dynamic background. We'll talk about it uh, today. And the topic which we want to talk about is uh, personal productivity. How do you manage your day-to-day -day work? How do you manage emails? How do you manage interrupts? How do you how do you use your time? Because all of all of us are working from home, uh, and some of us have been working from home for a long time. So we have our own personal productivity techniques. But in general, how, how does personal productivity work for all of us? And I, I know it is di different for everybody, but I'm sure there are things which we can learn from each other. So Kumaran, how do you manage your day-to-day -day productivity? How do, you, how do you ensure that just because you are at home, you are not losing track of work? You're not, you're not, uh, you're not busy with side business or distractions at home, uh, things like that, right? And even if, even if you were in an office, how, I'm sure some of the things will still, still be the similar things, how you organize your workspace, how you organize your emails, right? All those things are uh, things related to personal productivity. Give us an insight into how do you do that? Okay, so uh, I'll give my personal example and uh, generally what I've heard after the current work from home, which has been like more than a year now. I think personally for me, I've been working a lot of times from home. So I think it was like kind of used to that. And uh, I think I don't follow a nine to five schedule, just like a working hour office. So kind of I have probably three, three hour slots to work with. So it will be typically between something like uh, 8 uh, eight to 11. Then uh, I will have a break. Then I would have another 2 to 5. Then uh, another break. Right? Then exactly 8. Hours, so around 6 to mm -hmm. 8 or 6.30 to 8. Like that. So I kind of break it and take my uh, afternoon nap as well. So it's usually in these slots these things will only get changed if there is not that much of work that time or there is a uh, external meeting something happens okay. so that's that's a broad structure it's not like uh, clockwork kind of a thing but that's a broad working hours kind of a schedule do you take a nap in between the after lunch something like yeah that? yeah yeah, okay. yeah so See, 11 to 2, I don't do anything. It's like mm -hmm. generally eating, probably after lunch, I take a snap, nap for half an hour or one hour. Depends mm -hmm. on when I go to sleep. Sometimes what happens is if I don't feel like it, then mornings 9 to 11, in, instead of 8 to 11, I start at around 9, 9, 9.30. So in those days, maybe in the weekends, I'll catch up that extra one hour or one and a half hours. Like mm -hmm. Saturday, Sunday is there, I catch up during that time. So roughly, it's, that's how I uh, kind of do it. So that's been fine. And uh, uh, for me, it's been kind of useful. I mean, for many years, I've been doing, I think, started even before Microsoft, when I had my own company in Bangalore and I used to work in Chennai, I needed mm -hmm. to have this and it kind of caused it. But for others, I think it's a problem because they kind of usually work from, let's say, 9.30 to 6.30. Typical uh, people, and now it has become crazy for them. It's become like eight to eight or eight to nine, right? And they are sitting in the same place. Yesterday, I saw one triangle, right? There is a, a dinner table, bed, and a computer. So that life, the life cycle, or uh, of uh, professional, right? From bed to dinner table to computer. So you just keep this three triangles. You keep doing, right? So there it becomes a problem. And I think it's, uh, there is a hidden burnout that happens, right? It's like uh, you can see people getting 
disinterested or uh, disengaged as time goes on and it's becoming even more trickier with the current uh, scenario especially here um, in india is that even for me we don't feel like uh, pushing people things are slowing down or it's hard to maintain mo- momentum um, we don't feel like asking people like i don't feel like pushing people i don't feel like pushing myself so that is under a serious problem i think uh, uh, it's momentary or it might take months i i don't know but i see that thing really happening right like uh, the momentum of work happening is dropping you you don't feel like pushing somebody or asking somebody or even pushing yourself yeah so 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 you w- one thing you mentioned is the momentum of work obviously uh that is more psychological and uh, environmental and other factors which are not in our control right so what about the factors which we can control how, how do you how do you use those factors so obviously your routine is something which you can control but of course in in a in a larger organization where you have a log in time log out time and you have specific meetings to attend which happen throughout the day and back to back meetings things like that obviously those you cannot control but if you are at home and you can control your schedule and you can control your uh, time time for nap and all those things you can of course uh, do what you just suggested uh, what about the things uh, which you can control from how do you manage how the work comes in how you do it uh, not just today but in general how do you manage to keep your productivity up today of course uh, covid and uh, all those scenarios leaving those aside the work remains work right how do you organize that part uh, okay so i think one of the things which i kind of do is when i have some pieces of work to be done i actually go and block my own calendar okay okay so i think that's the first step like let's say you have to work on let's say two engagements and two deliverables have to go by weekend okay mm-hmm. so i'll i'll block 3 hours 3 days and in that time i won't take any other call i consider it like an external meeting so in that block i try to uh, stick and work so you know the deliverables that you will have to do by the end of the week right and uh, so you work accordingly now even if you are uh, even when it is related to like i have to team and they have to do some work so i kind of lock probably one hour a week just thinking about what the team should be doing what are the things that we should be doing i just call that as a planning time right it's like planning and self consider it as a self audit where are we kind of a thing so probably i do that once in two weeks so for the team what do they have to do so it's like it's a team space it's for the team it's for the team goal but lo- block one hour for that um i think fundamentally the point i'm trying to say is we have different responsibilities okay uh we block an hour of or whatever half hour half an hour of time for those uh things and i think uh, one thing that's recently been helping me is uh, cortana gives a daily briefing Mm-hmm. if you use office 365 so it'll actually find out hey you got 2 hours free today do you want to lock it for your time i'll say yeah please do that so that actually kind of helps it comes first thing in the morning right and then i'll say okay let me spend that it figures out from your calendar that you have to do this and then it helps you do that so that's uh, that's been also been uh, helpful um i would actually say the productivity killer is actually ad hoc meetings somebody just pinging you randomly yeah and and i think the best thing for that is switch off notifications on your phone and on your in mhm okay and uh, unless somebody is dying don't even bother <laughs> and and i would say every one hour check notification whether it's on phone or whatsapp or on your teams or click or slack whatever so i think that is important and uh, so th- those ad hoc things are the killers so in fact i would say even if you don't plan don't do ad hoc stuff your productivity will go up 
one one of the things which actually saw i saw in um, uh, in one of the auto responses to some of the team members who i work with uh, so usually when you are in on i am with somebody you will say first thing you will say is hi right and uh, and wait for the other person to respond so that you can actually ask the question so in this person's uh, response i actually stopped doing that because i know there is no point uh, uh, asking hi and then launching the question and whatever right so i simply asked the question i said uh, hi this is my question uh, whenever you get a chance respond to it so it is like an email but with one line yeah. right so uh, and 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 i i'm not waiting for your response you respond whenever you want to do so the uh, the auto response actually said is please don't waste your time by saying hi and hello and all those things just simply ask your question if i when i, I will respond whenever i can so <laughs> i realized that i was sort of doing it by default now people are asking if this is why you are wasting my sending me an interrupt without any action right hi is an interrupt without an action so how do you i mean i'm just curious it's more a technical thing is it yeah. like you send an auto responder in no no you see in your so what you can do is you can set up a Uh, status right in teams you can set up a status oh, status okay right so status is uh, automatically displayed to people if you i think some of them set up it as an out of office thing or some i think one of these options i, I did not actually check because i never use out of office because so there is no point <laughs> sending out of office i'm never in office anyway so yeah. so that's what i thought that that is actually a very good productivity tip if you are doing i am with somebody just ask the question and don't wait for response and uh, do whatever i am is supposed to be asynchronous it is not supposed to be synchronous in fact my default response is for anything except a phone call i will have i have a 24 hour sla right you send me whatsapp you send me uh, i am you send me any email default response time is 24 hours right if you really want my attention you call me <laughs> right you have my phone number you have you can call on teams also if if something is really urgent you can call on teams right so that is my default response so i so I, like you said i also have turned off my notification in fact windows 10 gives you a, a focus assist mode if you right click on the on the uh, in the right bottom of uh, your window where the notifications are coming so there is a option called focus assist mm. right so you turn it on and you can turn it to it says only alarms or uh, only high priority right so so windows becomes clean right of course phone you can turn off notifications so i don't respond to any notifications on the on the pc at least so if i'm working there is no notifications popping up right so the not only notification will be that the if the somebody is sending me a message the the icon will change color and i can notice it or not notice it that is up to me <laughs> so that that is how i sort of prevent notifications i stop, completely stopped getting notifications after i turned on focus assist ah uh, okay got it i can try that right. so so i i think that yeah. the yeah when could you want to say something Yes. So for your uh, like uh, for uh, Kumaran case, uh, Kumaran is working for home for uh, many many years. So it is uh, it is there is no difference for the Kumaran whether it is a COVID situation or any other situation. It is the same. Their culture is same. There is no difference. Mm -hmm. So they they don't uh, feel any changes in this um, culture uh, like uh, new working uh, environment. If you take a um, startup company like us. Mm -hmm. So initially, and um, our productivity is very high. If you say, if you say, like uh, last year, um, March, April, May, actually our productivity was very high because like uh, people are very happy since they are working from home. Um, so they are uh, literally they are working for at least uh, twelve hours uh, per day. So uh, as as Kumaran said, they will take uh, breakfast. lunch and dinner the rest of them they are working in front of the computer mm -hmm. right um, um apart from sleep so um, in that case um, our productivity was very high for a couple of months after mm -hmm. that uh, they are facing like um, uh, some monotonous uh, some uh, 
uh, some laziness, our product gradually got reduced because uh, they uh, they don't know how to organize their work, how to they, uh, uh, they don't know how to organize their personal work from the um, um, the, the professional work, right? Uh, and that's where the the problem comes in. Since since we are working from home, then um, the main uh, like of course you have to give the priority to the work and if it is that important and and sequel um, important you also give your personal work also like that's how you need to manage uh, your uh, productivity as far as my my concern so the the problem comes in they, <clears throat> they don't know how to organize mm -hmm. okay so the the kumaran has said uh, one tips i uh, they will uh, block um, time block by block like mm -hmm. the first three hours they don't take any notification or like um, any distractions. They will lock room like um, three hours. They will only focus on work, and then they will give some break. They will work some personal work, and then he will come back. Actually, this is um, um, this is what like this block timing may vary from um, team to team or uh, like company to company because we were having the status meeting, um, some uh, uh, some other meeting in twelve o'clock. We cannot. Um, uh, allocate that meeting, that timing, right? So uh, that uh, that we need to be uh, train our team also, not only for your productivity. Like you need to train your team, like how to allocate uh, your timing. Because we might be thinking that okay, we have assigned the work, they will be uh, working and coming back to us. Like you cannot separate actually that COVID situation from your work because. Many of my employee, I mean, our employee mm -hmm. got COVID affected. And even in fact, one of our uh, employees' father got expired. Mm -hmm. So we cannot, uh, we, we should be prepared for this kind of situation also. Mm -hmm. And to make, um, so that the point I'm trying to make is like, train your employees how to uh, no um, so any any specific the, the any specific uh, organization techniques which uh, have worked uh, in your company which you want to share um yeah actually we have um, instead of um, training yourself actually we are i have personally i have joined one course which which helps me a lot and i am i am recommending that course to our team also please go through this course Mm -hmm. And uh, please uh, come up with your you know, own schedule and productivity. Like, mm -hmm. That's what you, I did it for. You me. want to share the name of the course for um, our listeners? Yeah, it is uh, It is in uh, right now, it is in only Tamil. Mm -hmm. So it is not in any other that language. That is fine. It means we have a lot of people who understand Tamil who m might be listening. So, uh, what, what is it? Just give us a gist of what the course actually helps you do. Maybe there may, okay. there may be, of course, other courses in similar. Uh, structure which helps in other languages also. But what is a what is the main message or the main content of the course uh, which you are? Okay, the, the main content of the course is like uh, it. It course helps me to uh, to come up with the goal what you wanted to do, and then how to uh, uh, improve your productivity or timing towards that goal. That. Goal might be anything, whatever you want it to be in your life. Can right? give an example? Also, maybe some goal that you took and how it is helping. Okay, so I took my goal is like actually I have written it in the like my wall also. It is help one million aqua farmers technologically to improve their productivity and sustainability and traceability. Like this is my goal. Okay. So the same way, like goal might be very from one person to one person, like and and also it uh, that course also help you how to improve your productivity, like you know uh, how, how you can organize your day or uh, how you can. You know, it is it is general, mm -hmm. but but it helped me a lot. So I thought that no, my team also get. Uh, so what uh, changes you made? What changes you made after you went through that course? Okay, so one change, as we, the Kumaran said, I actually I stuff all my notifications from uh, nine to two actually, mm -hmm. and and it is it is not only for that, like it will also help you to mentally prepare 
because so it helps me to do a yoga in the morning in the morning mm -hmm. and uh, like uh, visualize your goal and visualizing technique and uh, visual board something like that mm -hmm. similar okay so so those are the changes which you you made uh, to yeah. uh, and you you said you also used the blocking time uh, technique which uh, kumaran has already mentioned right yeah uh, uh, any anything which you heard from your uh, team members who sort of uh, use the same techniques or did, did any good feedback which came after they changed their way of working actually that that course starts from monday <laughs> okay for okay. for my team so okay. I, so, so you have yet to hear from him i think that'll be a good idea to yes. uh, check yes. back again the, uh, actually that um, one um, uh, the one thing i like about the uh, the course is it's a live session mm -hmm. it starts at 5 am in the morning okay. 5 to 6 <laughs> okay okay so you have to get uh, up really early to attend yeah. that course <laughs> yes so so it it does not affect your no regular uh, timing uh, but it might affect your sleep <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so it also helps me to go to sleep early. Okay. Okay. Actually, I I started waking up at four o'clock nowadays. Mm -hmm. To so I'll take a bath before before and, and do my morning rituals before attending the course. That's okay. okay. So so I, so so I think the message you are saying is, if you cannot make your own routine, take take external help. Right, uh, things like yes. this, this yeah. course, which will help you uh, pick up a routine, change your habits. I think maybe maybe something you want to talk about uh, uh, the tiny habits part. How, how how does that? How can that actually help uh, uh, make be more productive? Right. So this because I, I believe that that is also to do a lot with personal productivity. Tiny habits, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So I could I could see the like uh, many similarity of tiny habits in the course also. Like what they are also saying is do uh, small changes in your life. Like not a big changes, only small changes. It will reflect you somewhere in long term. So always look for the um, uh, the uh, longer uh, like benefit instead of uh, shorter period. See if you are started the exercise. Eh? You cannot get the six pack in the day. Like it will take two years, right? Yeah. yeah. So for that, you need to start with a single push up. Right. So yeah, power to Kumar. Yes. <laughs> I, I think it's uh, it's interesting. I think what you need is a combination of two things. Uh, so when we say productivity, right? People kind of uh, the biggest misnomer about productivity is the effort that you are putting. If I put in more effort, then I'm more productive, which is not true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just because I work twelve hours doesn't mean I'm very productive. I'm just ha hard working. All right. Hard work. Yeah. <laughs> Am I being productive? Well, that's a different question. So, what kind of uh, gives you the sense know that what is productive? It it relates to what uh, when I just know. You need to have a north star or a goal. See, otherwise it's like you pedal fast, but you pedal in all sorts of directions, or you're pedaling in a circle, right? I, I've become she. It's like uh, I used to pedal at one kilometer per hour. Now I'm pedaling after ten years of uh, practice. I'm pedaling at ten kilometers per hour. My productivity has gone up ten x. Seems to be true, but if you're in a circle. Too bad. <laughs> you are in the same place. You're just going in the same circle, right? You're just going faster. That's all, right? You're not it going is, anywhere. Yeah, it is related to your goal also. Like why you are pedaling it? You want to reduce your uh, no uh, <laughs> weight. Right? Or, or you want to reach to uh, the, like Chennai to Delhi. Right? That and is the practically how this manifests is like if you take a developer for example, right? Uh, very sincere, hardworking developer. He'll keep on writing one code after another code or another code. And if he finds a problem, he or she will keep just changing the code again and again. Right? They call it R and D. Mm -hmm. I call it trial and error. Yeah. 
Okay, so I stopped telling them, please, in my team, I discourage them from using the word R and D. That's not. It's a trial and error. That's it's not trial. Um, what should I say? Um, undervalue R and D by calling what we are doing as R and D. What we are doing is trial and error. Okay, yeah. there's no research or development happening here. No, by but the way, they, I, I believe research and development is also trial and error. So <laughs> there is no difference <laughs> as such. <laughs> <laughs> okay so basically i think in in this case there is a formal structure to doing something there is a goal that is defined in lot of in uh, r and d there is no pure r and d there is no goal it's just that you discover things and then after you get it you figure out you connect the dots by looking back okay. <clears throat> um but again that's a big debate in the r&d field like should you have a goal or shouldn't you have a goal or you don't be innovative if you set a goal it's a big topic we'll keep that aside for some other day but in the normal circumstances we have goals defined right as an individual or as a team so it's not just important to increase how much effort that you're putting in but i think it's even more important to identify what goal which we are trying to reach and that's where i kind of tie in what we call as the intention so there is a macro intention and a micro intention so for example in um, like let's take if i just take venkat's case the macro intention is i'm going to impact 1 million farmers excellent okay but that might take you 5 years 10 years to achieve that okay yeah that's the biggest challenge that comes is what do i do this week what do i do this month what do i do for the next two months so we need to kind of be also able to get it into a micro intention or a micro goal derive something from that so for example in this in um, venkat's case it could be that uh, the farmers who are about to start cultivation right they are confused so next 3 months i am going to work on removing their confusion okay. right before so before cultivation before start of cultivation they are struggling that can be one that's just like one type of thing he said using technology or the other goal you see you know what i think ai can do a lot of help so in the next 3 months i will have the basic ai model which can predict what the output will be i will get that ready so it's also in, from the larger intention get a smaller goal and whatever you are doing daily allocate a fixed block to that because you will have transactional stuff when you have operational is too high let's say goal based long term things right so you need to have slots for both and most important for operational stuff you should clearly do it only in the slots otherwise it's like cancer it will just spread and take your time so i okay. i want to share one uh, productivity technique which which i have developed for email because i i know although we want to get rid of email we want to do completely on iam and teams and all those things but email does not go away it has not gone away for 25 years i don't think it is going any anytime soon right so <clears throat> so what i do is <clears throat> i read only mails which are sent to me or cc to me i don't um. read i don't read any other mails so what i've done is in outlook i've created a rule to send all the mails which are sent to me or cc to me into a separate folder and i will read only that folder rest everything is not important so because i don't care about the notifications so even if anything lands in the in inbox i don't really read that right so because if it is not sent specifically to me it is it is uh, not there is no specific action on me right so there may be general message announcements things like that i can read when i have whenever i have time so i i actually for everything else i have rules for any specific messages they will go into different folders and all those things those rules exist but anything which does not fall into the rules they will go into the inbox i will read the inbox once in a day sometime right 
so if something is very urgent and somebody needs my attention they will obviously call me <laughs> so that is my default procedure for handling email and then i don't get more than 15 mails in a day which are targeted to me or cc to me for action which which is completely taken the load off me reading emails actually ah okay so that is that is something which i i i have been doing for the past almost 10 years i believe so i i stopped uh, reading all any other mails except which are sent to or cc to me is there any other any such technique which you are using to manage your day to day interrupts Uh, actually i i started using it so in that course like there is a one thing called decluttering 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 yeah okay. decluttering your emails decluttering you are uh, like what you call desk and everything so whatever you are having unwanted you please take a throw it away and which you are not using it for the last two years i don't think so you are going to using it for last after, after uh, like uh, yes. five years also like so whatever you are not using it for 2 years you just take it away mm-hmm. and same thing goes to the email also like mm-hmm. uh, so i i i am trying to be zero unread emails in my email box so uh, whenever i get a time i will sit and i will create a, a different folder for a different projects i will move the emails to the project and the rest of the emails actually i will simply get it I so don't you, read it. Do do you uh, actually so, use uh, those rules? Do you uh, do you use any of the rules? I I understand you use uh, a G Suite, right, for your email. Yeah. yeah so yeah. they they also have uh, rules where you can auto tag and auto uh, sort of organize the mails. You don't use that as a, as a method to help you organize. Yeah, uh, I do use like uh, some of the emails, but. Um, but some of the emails i will be getting it from the, the same project manager mm-hmm. for the different projects so okay. for that i cannot use the same uh, okay. Okay. okay right in that case i will manually move it and i will give the different color coding to the different projects so that would help me also no uh, to to different actually this this reminds me of this color coding uh, i there is so when you have been one more than a year ago when i used to travel a lot they have to have lot of these receipts and bills which used to come by email right and you have to submit these bills right so i i actually developed my own sort of coding system and whenever a bill arrives i will just tag it right this is this is a uh, bill for taxi bill for hotel uh, things like that right so all the uh, flight tickets right so all these I, they, I will I will just organize them and color code them, and they, they, I can just then uh, put a flag on them. So I, I just open all the flagged emails when I have to submit uh, my expenses. I say okay, then it automatically organize all the flight tickets, all the hotel, all the taxi, right? So that that also actually some one of the productivity techniques because otherwise I have to search how many flight ticket mails were there, organize the bills. right so so uh, that exactly. is i think it's a exactly. good good idea when you use color coding yeah and, uh, and not only that it it reduces our time uh, time for uh, like uh, like anything so for example um, uh, you might have at this situation you you must you might have misplaced your other card somewhere mm-hmm. when when you wanted to have a other card like you might be searching it for one or two hours until unless you keep it in the same place so um, so like what i did is all my id cards all my you know uh, the cards which are uh, i'll keep it in only one place mm-hmm. so whenever i need it even i can call my uh, home go to that place and get open it. the dryer take my uh, uh, id card take picture and send it to me like mm-hmm. so i can send it and, and i also i also have a digital copy of all my uh, mm-hmm. uh, id card so whenever i need so so these are the changes i made it like function have you used the digi locker actually uh, no actually i am i am using it no uh, uh, google drive actually your voice is breaking uh, deeper yeah i think it okay looks like my microphone has yeah, now, okay. it's okay. now, now it's fine now it's fine now it's fine now it's fine 
Okay. Maybe I moved something and the, my microphone <laughs> got busy. Okay. I, I was saying, have you, uh, this, the DigiLocker application, have you tried that application uh, 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 from, this is a government uh, application where all the government issued IDs you can store and, and actually, I am, actually I am using it, I guess, like for my driving license. And, yes, yes, uh, yeah. driving license and so there uh, is two things sure there. Is. There is something called M Parivahan, which I use. Mm -hmm. That one is like. Uh, yeah, even, even I'm also using. I'm also using M Parivahan. Yeah. Ah, that is for auto things, but all other things we'll have to find out. Yeah. So, so DigiLocker actually uh, is a good application. So I, I found means it, you can have your uh, children's uh, certificates also there if you want and. Uh, you can use that as a uh, official document and share, share, share it through the DigiLocker also. So Aadhaar oh, card, oh, it will okay. actually, uh, what it will do is it will mask the Aadhaar card instead of sending a picture. So it will send a masked Aadhaar card that this is, uh, doesn't have to share the all, all of the 12 digit number. It will just send a, uh, the QR code based uh, Aadhaar card. So if somebody wants to verify, they can do that. So that, that actually is just as a sidetrack, that is a good application. I found that uh, you can okay, you your, right? keep your IDs. So I don't know whether it allows passport also. Maybe it will allow passport also. Maybe who knows? But passport is physical. <laughs> hmm. okay. So one of the other things which actually, the, the things which you said about decluttering, uh, the, uh, we are uh, in all organization, we have these distribution lists, right? Where you will keep on getting alerts and mails and uh, a huge number of questions, right? For example, in, in our company, we have a, a local chat group, which is, let's say a Bangalore based uh, group, which will uh, have all the information where all random things will come, right? But they are all time sensitive. Means if you if you have not seen them in one week, there is no relevance to that information, right? So what I've done is, in in uh, Outlook, uh, I uh, I think Office three sixty five has a retention policy uh, option. So if you if you have not used that, that is a very good option for getting rid of mails which you will never read, right? So so it, these are the so this all I have applied this retention policy that if I have all mails in this folder after one week, it should just delete. So I, you can set up the time. So some mails I will keep for one month, some mails I will keep for one week. So, so that all that automatically, my unread mails will become zero <laughs> automatically because I don't really care about those mails, right? So I'm, I'm not intentionally trying to read those mails because anyway, I'm not, they are no value to me. So that's one way I have figured out to declutter. I said, okay. These are alerts. These are things which are no, time sensitive. If I've not acted on them in one week, there's no point in me looking at, at them at a different point of time. I think typically things from uh, applications, right? Like it's workflow kind of application. I think they are a perfect candidate for uh, what you are just telling us. Yes, retention policy. Yeah. Yeah, I means some people keep them because they somehow the believe that. Maybe, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. It can be any anything. Uh, uh, when get for example, for me, GitHub, right? When people keep updating issues on GitHub, I keep getting the update. Okay. So when okay. issue tracker people are working on that, they are updating it. Every change will send a mail to. Me. Now, when the okay, issue is okay. closed, I really don't need that mail. So, typically, I will have some. In a week, I get some fifty mails or. 100 mails like any github update i'll get one mail okay 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 so but anyway that actual record is there on github right so i really don't need that email on my inbox yeah yeah in, in fact uh, when facebook came so many years ago this was the first thing which i stopped notifications for because anything on facebook it will use to send email <laughs> that that was also a big uh, clutter yeah. generator <laughs> So we still get it, no? LinkedIn, we get we get from LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, you can. Start. There are. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, means those are those are all, uh, means different notifications. I guess uh, these are all 
instead of push you should they should i think the message there is instead of getting the push notification make them pull notification you want a notification you go get it so instead of uh, because the in the software world everything is now push notification let us push notification right all 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 applications want to do push notification right in fact there are now services available dedicated to just enabling push notifications i'm sure venkat is using some of those push notification uh yeah yeah yeah. Right? <clears throat> yeah our our application primarily based on push notification <laughs> right so what we are here suggesting is if you want to be productive you have to be pull instead of push right so you pull right. your notifications then then uh, get uh, get sort of decluttered during the day by all these bombardment of notifications any other thing which you want to share kumaran uh no i think basically from a team i would say also have fixed i think i was talking to venkat yesterday hmm. schedule meetings right and try yeah. to just talk when the meetings are scheduled and have different meetings for reviews different for operations different for okay. strategy discussions <laughs> like that so when people come in they come in with their mind otherwise i think that's a very important and it kind of feeds off each other so let's say i have a direction problem i don't know what to do i know that wednesday 9 o'clock meeting i can go and ask that question i don't have the desperation i have to call my boss immediately i don't need to i know that wednesday i will call and ask him like that on the meetings there actually one uh, productivity technique which i uh, actually saw in outlook which is also available as a tip in number of uh, websites is you can change the default time of the meeting right one is that stop having these one hour meetings right reduce them to 45 minutes uh-huh. right uh or a half an hour meeting you do it to 25 minutes because a lot of people have these back to back meetings correct, right correct. so yeah. you don't have time even for a bio break right so especially working from home people just believe there is there is no need to take a break right <laughs> but that that is not something uh, uh which is true and 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 so what you can do is in your outlook you can change the default uh, meetings to instead of if you don't want uh, 45 minutes you can make it 55 minutes this is okay uh, we will stop the meeting 5 minutes before the hour so that you have time to do something else before your next meeting right so that is actually uh, i believe a good uh, way to keep the productivity and the motivation in the teams at a decent level so that you finish in in time you give people time you are considerate that back to back meetings in fact I, there was some paper which was published i guess by microsoft only says back to back meet meetings are and especially back to back video meetings are something which you should not go for and if you if possible go for audio once and switch video when you think it is the most necessary thing to do okay so yeah so what you are saying is like uh, i am also thinking the same like you know Uh, when you when you uh, comes to the uh, meeting, sometimes I schedule it back to back meeting. So, but uh, most often that meeting does not end it in on time. So it will uh, it will move no uh, uh, again up uh, like five or ten minutes due to some reason like so that next meeting you no know, got uh, obviously uh, got postponed or late like you know it might give some frustrations to the other members also like you are waiting for the. meeting so so they they will think that okay always he will come in late so <laughs> he'll he'll move uh, uh, he'll move to his uh, like mind state itself right? in fact in, in teams actually there is now a interesting feature if you have, if you have noticed that uh, kumaran 5 minutes before the meeting gets over yeah. it flashes that 5 yeah. minutes left in this meeting right Correct. you can also easy. use something like that which has a flash 5 minutes before the meeting ends you start winding up right because if you have 5 minutes to wind up something you can actually end the meeting in time right because you cannot end it because somebody is already in the flow right but if you have that 5 minute warning to everybody that okay this meeting is going to be over in 5 minutes let us wind up 
Hmm. Actually, uh, yeah, we were we were used to have a timekeeper for this purpose. Yeah. So every meeting they uh, they used to have one timekeeper. I will he will tell us okay in in the in a five minutes meeting is going to over. Like we have to. I think you should like keep five. that practice. You should keep that practice. But, even but even somehow if you, yeah. time, you have a timekeeper. <laughs> Actually, that uh, that I don't know. Like uh, what what had happened? Even I, I don't have any idea. Like it is got vanished now. How does we are not mm -hmm. following? but i i think that's a that's a that's a good practice having a timekeeper and teams now is giving sort of a timekeeper kind of a feature in build right. so that, i think that 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 is is there, is there something else kumaran which you suggest how to end meetings in time <laughs> how do you how do you practice it no i i think we have got used to it now i mean like even if we go beyond we are very conscious so i would say when you go over a meeting apologize to everybody apologize to everybody at least do that okay sorry we ran over meeting yes that's the easiest thing we can do so once you start doing that right then it becomes you become more and more conscious about it see maybe we are not very good at breaking it on time but what we can definitely do is when we run over the time when we finish the meeting the organizer should definitely apologize All others who feel like apologizing can also apologize. Sorry, I made a mistake. We couldn't finish on time. In fact, one of the practices which we have as a culture within within our company is that if you end early, right? Actually, people people make the effort of saying we are giving you back your time. Ah, um, right. Say we were supposed to do it in 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 forty five minutes, but we finished in thirty. i am giving you 15 minutes back of your day to day do whatever else you want to do right so it's people feel happy about that means there is nothing gained actually but <laughs> people feel happy that okay yeah, i correct. got something back from uh, even if it is just free time so i i think that's a that's a good practice i i personally feel happy when i get 15 minutes back i think what i said is the opposite of that i apologize for taking away the time which yes. i didn't ask from you yes Yeah. So this this is the opposite of that. If you actually give time, then you make people realize that you have given them time back. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's when they start valuing that. Okay, this was valuable time, <laughs> which which right. I got back. So any other thing before we close? Uh, any other last uh, uh, productivity tips you want to share? Uh, no, that's what I said. Venkat, anything? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, that's it actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. all right so so th that's that's our uh, session for today uh, good productivity tips i know we went all over the place to uh, share our uh, insights but that's how uh, our conversations go and i we hope that you like to listen to these conversations please do subscribe go to eti unplugged.in/subscribe and uh, the number of ways you can find audio video whatever is your preferred format and to do give us uh, your feedback uh, we'll be happy to improve our sessions improve our quality of uh, discussions and uh, ask your questions thank you and see you next time